Bitcoin is a bank in cyberspace. Monetary energy. Or of the earth. Doubles every year. Listen to my words. Selling doesn't hurt. Selling is absurd. It's like cutting of your wings, but you want to be a bird. basically where we've got um, El Salvador currently putting it on um, the uh, what do you call this the Wikipedia they've put their currency officially as Bitcoin right since 2020 this is what's going on right now um, also this is another country um, I'm gonna be talking about well right now just let you know another country who's really interested so our country Tonga is also sitting on 700 million <coughs> uh, melting ice cube on and Bitcoin fixes this right so what they're saying is their Treasury has about 700 million sitting in there they're gonna fix this right this is a video that I basically uh, uploaded and it talks about how El Salvador has a legal tender and they um, and it should have been uh, holding uh, 150 million dollars worth into their treasury basically so this is the message the guy sent um, got 54 views and I'll play it just so you can see what's going on Bitcoiners around the world the time has come we are ready we did our part now the ball is on your side thank you this is the moment where they talk in um, Spanish and they do the voting and you can see the response. Watch the votes go up. Look at this. I mean, to me, it looks like everybody. I don't really see anybody not voting. I don't see anybody not voting. There's only one fella there. This, this geezer here, he didn't vote, right? And his assistant didn't vote, but everybody else <laughs> voted. And this one here looks miserable anyway. You can zoom in and see. These ones here are miserable. You know, miserable, miserable gets this whole section here are miserable. So they didn't vote. But other than that, everybody else looks like they're voting. So the majority vote won for Bitcoin to be a legal tender in their country. Um, so that's pretty much it, right? I'm not going to show any more of that. So this is what's going on currently. Um, what we're seeing, right? So it's great news. Um, obviously, it's pumped a little bit, but guys, listen. We we were at almost close to 1.4 trillion dollars in BTC. Currently, we're sitting at uh, approximately uh, what is it? We're sitting at uh, let's see, 683. So close to 700 mil, right? Uh, 700 billion, right? That's what we're sitting on currently. Um, it's not that bullish, right? Um, but I'm glad that the volume has come back in again. I'm glad these volumes have picked up. A lot of interest has picked up. I am glad with this. I mean, looking at this, it's showing that on the 24 hour, we had a 14% increase, which is really, really good. Currently, we're sitting at that 24 hour high, um, but we still got a long way to go back to our all time high, right? Um, but, you know, everything's looking good. Let's see where it goes from there. Um, what else? The other thing I wanted to talk about is this particular chart I put on the video um, that I did the other day. So this video was published on 5th June, had 197 views. Um, and you can see this is the title, Crypto Market and Bitcoin Conference Update. And in this particular chart, I drew this two patterns. I said the likelihood we might have this pattern or we might have this pattern. And exactly at that time, I even said, I said, if we do go to this particular level, then you have your buy order a couple of grand above, right, around here. Now, if we go into the Bitcoin chart, this was the chart that I was actually using to do the drawing. And this is the pattern we played out and a couple of grand more than where we should have been, exactly as I've mentioned, we did that as well. Um, if you look back here, um, this is the pattern that we played and um you know same thing played out here so this is the the bigger pattern that played out so we had a lovely little bounce obviously yesterday we adjusted a few things and today i've actually put a little triangle here just to kind of show you what's going on but there's more info there right so obviously on the short shorter time frame um it looks like as if we just broke the trend everything looks all positive oh look we broke the greater trend and we're moving up it's not over guys you need to understand it is not over at all right so this is on a four hourly chart and what i want to sh um, show you actually and this is really important right you need to understand a trend a trend um 
could be anything. So this is a four hour chart we're using. You could have a trend within a minute chart, right? This could be a one minute trend and we can put fibs and play this one minute trend or we can have a five minute trend, right? You can see this five minute trend here. We can see a 15 minute trend here, right? Everything is a trend. So the, you know, this trend would be uh, going around from here. So what I'm trying to say here is it depends on what time frame you are using this data for. If you want to do day trades or whatever, use your hourly 30 minute, 15, five, even your one minute, right? But if you're going to do more of a daily stuff, right? You know, like a few days, one or two days, 48 hours, whatnot, you want to use your higher time frames, which is two, three, four, and even your daily, right? If you're going to trade over a week and you're looking at long term perspective and you're trying to do forecast something, right? You're going to use your weekly, your day, uh, your daily, your weekly. That's what you're going to use. You don't want to use short time frame, right? So, you know, I have this saying, I say the longer the data, the stronger the data, right? That's the key word here, the stronger. Um, so the longer means much stronger. That's what it is. So, so far, this is what we're seeing. But I want to show you a bigger picture. So this is a chart that we have been using and you can see that the Fibonacci lines are kind of being a resistance and whatnot, right? So this is what's going on. Now, I actually drew this chart elsewhere just to show you another bigger picture. So this is on a four hour time frame. Um, on a daily time frame, you can see this is a daily time frame that we have. Um, and you can see that theoretically we've just peaked over but we haven't really really broken the trend we need a candle to go over and i'm going to uh, demonstrate this here for you so i've made another one here i've opened another chart and what i'll do is this particular chart i'm going to make this go public now so this chart will be on the public view rather than the other one because i want you to observe the bigger data so obviously here i've got my indicator activated and we'll talk about that later and this particular line that you see here and i'll show you what this line represents this line is actually this particular candle here right so i just put it here basically just for now right and there's a reason why i've put it then i want to explain to you so if you look carefully the on the daily the trend has not been broken right so the trend is still active we haven't broken that trend in order for us to break this particular trend we need to go above this particular candle right this particular candle is where we're going to do a trend reversal now the volume that we've had here the amount of money this uh, little candle here this uh, volume candle represents right the volume we've had here is this volume measured here so if we do a measured move upside from the be best support zone so here we've had a massive support and resistance zone um, so yeah, what was I saying? So this, this particular line you're seeing is pretty close to this particular Fibonacci line. I can put a Fibonacci just to show you as well that it is exactly pretty much where it's happening. Now remember, each chart is um, kind of relevant to the exchange I'm looking at, right? So this is a bitstamp chart, right? On the bitstamp chart, you can see that we haven't broken the trend. And if we do, what we need to see obviously we want to go above that this is where we're seeing resistance current resistance we're seeing but this doesn't exactly change the trend all it does is literally take this candle and go this way sideways right it doesn't take it out of anywhere you know where we want it to so what we want to see is a move a few candles and this is not exact like not it doesn't have to happen today it could happen tomorrow day after tomorrow or whenever right but the argument here that we're going to have is we need to see a volume all right, a few volume candles moving up that will shoot us above this small resistance line right down here. And this will technically uh, invalidate the downward trend and create a brand new reversal. Right. This is what this one would do. All right. Remember here around this 43 mark to this 47 mark. Right. We've got this very small but slightest but more on the shorter time frames we've got massive control going on here we want to break this control and when you say right we're not giving bears any more control we want to we want to control the market so we need to see this after that this uh wick you're seeing here is actually the same as this right so i just duplicated it right and i put it here and i said right then after that we need to rebound rebound on this particular zone so what the pattern we need to create is very simple we need to you know somehow get up here go up down here confirm this come back here confirm this and then move up to here now when we go here we might see a significant um so if i put a line here you can see at around fifty-eight thousand, we might see a significant resistance right and this is remember this is on the daily so this data is far more better than any other data you're going to see right because we have a longer data means our stronger data so we will see resistance around here 
Um, and then if we break this resistance, then 65, 75, 85, whatever we decide, uh, whatever we think the market should be, isn't gonna take long, right, for us to get to there. And if I just put a fib there, just to kind of show you what's going on, so you can um, see exactly what's going on. So the fibs are saying, you know, if we go back to this particular zone and you can see the Fibonacci, this is the 786 uh, Fibonacci level just after the golden zone. Um, you can also see that this particular candle pushes us into the golden zone. From the golden zone, we go above the 786 and this whole area, remember 0.5 to 786. This is a, a kind of a little golden pocket area that we need to buy. So we need to be in this zone in order for us to go up. Once we're here, we break above this. We're going to have this resistance pretty much on this particular line because Fibonacci doesn't lie. And then from that point onwards, the, you know, the next level is just simple, 65, not to worry. After that, we've got the 75, then we've got the 87, and then we've got the Fibonacci 2.0. We're not going to look at that. We're just going to focus on this right now. Um, it's giving us the 87K, should be the next uh, all-time high that we should be looking at. So, but this whole thing could be playing for a good few days. I mean, right now, um, the, we're, you know, the candle we're on, 9th of June, right, you know, we can move this over and we can say, okay, it's going to take at least three, four days, maybe even a week for us to get to this level. But this is the zone that we're looking at that would actually kind of invalidate the downward trend and recreate a upward momentum trend. And that's what we're looking for. So those, these are key levels. As you can see, this 47 is a key level. This 43 is a key level, right? Um, I can even adjust this slightly below right and put it here and you can see that even then it's giving me full confluence with the actual support resistance range because the amount of traffic we've had here we've had a previous high here where we got rejected and we came down and we can use that data to create our brand new resistance right um, so this is what you need to understand on a longer time frame what's going on um, somebody wanted to know uh, about ethereum ethereum as you look carefully this is uh, an old chart that we had uh, ethereum is respecting right is ethereum didn't really even dump right this particular time if you can see ethereum is actually respecting the fib lines and trying to stay within this golden zone it looks like it might want to do a little breakout but right now i think btc has more control so we're going to have to observe btc and see what's going on there um, i want to show you the total market cap this is a really good one as well so on the total market cap what you see is the recent dump right so the current dump we had and I'm sure some of you guys who've um, watched my videos from past, you know that we drew this as a little experiment. And I, I, I said, look, there's a greater trend line and there's a shorter trend line, right? So the red line is the greater trend line, which goes back to infinity. Let's not talk about that one. But this particular uh, shorter uh, trend line is an upward trend line and we didn't break that. And coincidentally, if you look, right, every time we had a dump, we respected this particular upward momentum trend line. So this was also giving us confluence that the market is not over. Because if we broke this and we came down here, of course, it's a greater trend line. If we broke this, then we're in a bear market. But right now, it's telling us we're not in a bear market. This is line is being respected, right? So this is just showing control, nothing more. That's what I wanted to show you. Also, somebody mentioned on one of the videos, they wanted uh, Harmony 1. So let's just see Harmony 1 USD, right? Um, so I'm going to drop this one here for that person. So Harmony 1, we did have a look uh, very recently, actually. So we're on the daily. Um, Harmony 1, if you are interested, um, all I can say is it's a good buy zone. That's all I can say. It's a buy zone. And if you look at this upward trend line, was broken. It's not actually valid anymore. Um, it's lower than the... Um, the the trend we drew um, in that sense we can actually put a trend line here and say well this is what's going on we need to see harmony one pop up over this but more importantly harmony one to actually show us anything uh, we need to go above this particular price here um, on a shorter term so we need to see a 12 cent harmony one um, but to get more i would i would highly say you know we need to get into this particular zone so this is just a short term thing I think what you need to understand is on the total market cap as well. Another thing you need to understand. <coughs> um, if I go to this one here, let me show you here, right? 
So have a look at this particular area. What's happening is BTC is gaining dominance and we need BTC to gain dominance. If BTC can move back over close to 40, 50 uh, percent at least, right? That's the lowest. Higher is better. But if you can go to 40, 50 percent dominance, then I think a lot of momentum and money is going to move into the market. If it stays low like this, it doesn't really help anything. So when this pump happens, a lot of these, um, you know, altcoins will take a significant dump and that would be a good opportunity to buy but eventually once btc settles down it's going to carry the whole market up so anything you see here as i've mentioned before as well and this is no financial advice guys remember anything you're seeing in these seven days and 30 days right any of these percentage you're seeing that is the discount you're getting but you have to be prepared to hold on to it for a long time right and what i'm saying long time it could be anything from like two months three months six months to a year to five years right if you're not prepared to hold on to them then you shouldn't be in it right this is what i'm going to say because right now market's going to show volatility and especially when bitcoin goes parabolic right so when we're seeing a parabolic run where btc just decides to go and hit those thresholds that 87k threshold hits that everyone's interested in btc so then the altcoins are not going to really pump because we're going to go back into the BTC season, not the altcoin season. Right now, we're technically, as I said, we're still in altcoin season, provided we're below 50%, right? Um, even if BTC goes all the way to 20, 30% and the market stays stable to that 1.6, for example, if we keep it at that 1.6 and BTC goes to 20, 30%, that's an altcoin season. But in order for us to hit those... 87k target or whatever you know on the bullish side um the market cap will be dominated by btc so that means the altcoins will take a massive hit right so you know know your risk um you know that's very important you have to have to definitely know your risk because there's going to be some massive moves coming from what i can see and also somebody um uh, I, I haven't answered it but i think somebody asked me a question <coughs> It's going to answer the person asked the question again he said um are we still going to be able to probably see this 29k um you know in the short short term all i can say is if you're looking at the four hourly for example let's go on the four hourly if we're looking at the four hourly so far we've broken trend we've confirmed the trend which is fine we are going to find resistance here we might bounce back we want to hold on to this line stay above this line if we can above stay above this line we might bounce again right and test this um triangle line here we might come down and then we need to break above both of this in order to get back into this particular zone once we break above this zone then we need to get over this line and do the same this particular pattern here if we can we enter this that's when everything changes and also if you look carefully this would be the zone where we want to go up so this 786 level is where we want to go to in order for us to completely change the trend right now um, so shorter time frame trends we need to right now from what i'm seeing is this particular area and i'll show you i'll leave um, no i've left the other chart for you so let's actually show you the other chart the one i've left for you so this is a chart i've left for you remember here we need to see these confirmations and this is on a daily let's move it over to four hourly just to show you what i'm talking about so we need to break above and come to this particular fibonacci level which is a two three six technically this is also within this particular day candle showing it on this actual triangle so if we can break above this triangle then we've got to push and we're going to try and come here we will get rejected and then we'll come back down again and then keep on trying until we get back into the 786 level um especially i mean that's the target right so i'll put the white line there as the target um coincidentally it's on the fib line as well so Numbers don't lie. Um, men can, everyone can, but numbers never lie. So have a look at the numbers because the numbers are saying something um, that I've been adamant about all this time. And so far, I can see that for us to confirm and uh, invalidate this particular whole candle, like this area for, for one daily candle, right? So this was one daily candle. For us to invalidate this one daily candle, we need to go above this particular zone in order for us to first invalidate it. And then the second invalidation we're gonna have is as soon as we go here, and that's gonna be the confirmation, right? So we invalidate with this, and then we confirm with this particular one, and then we know the market trend has changed. I hope this kind of helps. I'm not gonna make this any longer. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on another one. Adios, son.
Okay, this is me coming back from the future. I forgot to mention, is it possible, right? The question was, is it possible to calm down? As you can put, uh, see, like, okay, so a lot of people are saying they're using these two candles here, this candle here and this candle here, to say this was the double bottom, right? So this is the double bottom. This is what they're saying, one bottom, two bottom. Actually, it's not. Factually, this is still the double bottom. So we could potentially, and if I just take this candle, for example, and just use it, we could potentially go test everything right so test everything and still come back here and this would be our legitimate double bottom right so this is what you need to understand that everything looks positive but sometimes what looks like something could not be enough you know it could be something else right so this is not a double bottom you know I like I know a lot of people try try to use this particular candle wick here and this candle wick here and say this is a double bottom you know technically it's a bullish win that's not a problem we could we, we might not get another one but remember never ever go off guard because we could easily go all the way up here and then even then come back down here because the trend line is still active we could easily play around this trend line all day long like this right we could always come down and play around this trend line so you need to understand also this trend line is valid as well we haven't broken this so this is what i'm saying we need to for us to be positive we need to get out of this zone right now if we're in this particular zone we're still going to be quite bearish we have to stay bearish and this candle could easily flip and come back down here right so you know market going up 10 15 percent is great but we could easily have the market come back down and give us another 18 percent dump right for a double bottom so just hope this make, kind of makes self uh, sense i just wanted to add this on because i did forget um, thanks guys bye